Um, it's been about five, six years. There was a student, several students who wanted a robotics program, wanted a robotics program. This was sponsored directly by student interest. It's really social, and I like that. It makes me get out and do stuff. You learn a lot of new things about a lot of new people. I mean, I'd say not necessarily family, but you know, you want to go there to see the people, not just to build robots. What other club do you get to melt like sand and build stuff? You know, I mean, you, there's there's bandsaws and you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So um, I think it gives a, it's a great opportunity for them to just invent things. It's interesting to watch, um, and it's especially neat to see kids given a chance to solve problems. Despite the unifying name of Global Dynamics, it's actually divided into three teams. Team 4232, 6173, and 5177. Each has different members, different strategies, and will go head to head in competition. So, what does a robotics competition look like? A team consists of two driver operators, a coach, and a robot. Each match is played with four randomly selected teams, two per alliance. You just basically come up with a strategy with them and say, hey, we're going to do this, and if you can do this, that's great. The game is played on a 12-foot square playing field with a foam tile floor and one-foot high walls. At opposite corners of the field are two corner vortices, red and blue. Between them is the center vortex, which can freely rotate. Four beacons are mounted on top of the field walls. Before the match, field personnel randomize the four beacons. The match begins with a 30-second autonomous period. Autonomous is when the robot is controlled by itself, like you're coding it, you told it to use sensors or time to go and do these things. It's 30 second autonomous, and it's, um, I believe, a two minute teleop, which is teleoperated period, which is when the drivers pick up their controllers and control the robots for the rest of the match. There are plenty of other ways to score points, and there are many ways to lose them. The alliance with the most points at the end wins. So, how will the teams compete? I don't know there was sort of a whole lot of good for me to tell them what to do, you know, and they, a lot of it they, they figured out for themselves. That's part of the process. And they all had to have some sort of strategy. We're going to try and score the small balls in the corner goals. And to do that, we have these two flippers on the front of the robot that we can use to move the small balls into the goals. Basically, have to either score our wiffle balls, which are particles, into the ramp goals, which are like on the corners of the field. And you basically just go up a ramp and try to score a ball in there. We looked at the point values of doing different tasks on the field, and we realized that um, in the Georgia Robotics, um, we, were, we could get a lot of points doing beacons really well. And our goal is to get all of our points in autonomous, and then just control the beacons in end game. So our robot had a, a presser on the side, and it would extend that out and push the button, and then it would drive forward, and then push the button again. I think we have a pretty good shot at getting state this year. Um, yeah, because our autonomous will get us probably 90% of our points, and then we just control the beacons, and the other team on our alliance can do like the other work. Okay, some of it you, you can take on the school bus if you have to. Alright, let's throw, let's throw the capes in there. I was hopeful that they would at least yeah. place well. It improved, they had, they'd had some practice down here, so um, we knew the robots worked. I can take this box. I got 16 forms, I got 16 heads. I literally had no idea what, what to expect. I, you know, getting on the bus at uh, an ungodly time in the morning, uh, I had a lot of flashbacks to uh, when I was on academic teams. 
in high school on the math team doing you know uh, Saturday competitions, so that felt familiar. Except we didn't have you know power tools and, and robots with us. Um, but that kind of camaraderie and that kind of um, shared experience of, of going on competition that that was very familiar and very uh, nostalgic and very fun to, to be a part of it. Three, two, one, robot. It's a long day. It's a long day of, uh, of, of competition and sort of hurrying up and waiting um, and, and getting things ready and, and then um, seeing what other teams bring to the you know bring to the table. What our, all our robots tend to be uh, on the smaller and lighter side. We saw some robots that were really really built out and, and you know clearly a, a much uh, different philosophy as far as you know their their strategy or their funding or, or their or just, you know just what they what they were trying to accomplish. It's a fast-paced environment, so they learn very quickly what works and what doesn't. And um, all the teams generally rapidly improved. Six point seven three did pretty well. Forty two thirty two. Had some issues with the connectivity in the phone. We've got some issues with the USB, I think, that we've got to look at. And 5177 managed to stay in there. And stayed in they did. Team 5177's robot was quick and precise. Very effective at capturing beacons. We won the first two matches that we played. And then the other three matches that we played, we lost by less than five points. And we were able to control at least three of the four beacons um, in every match. A lot of people here, so our alliances are going to consist of three teams each. Back to seat number one. Who would you like to ask to be the second team to join your alliance? We would like to invite team 5177, Global Dynamics, the Noodle Squad. I was in this shit dance and I was kind of losing it. I was yelling at people to get batteries charging. You know, the big thing was, for them in particular, they tended to focus on doing one thing really well. And so in this case, it was scoring beacons. And they got a reputation for it. And so when there were selections for teams, for alliances, they were, they were picked. After that initial shock, you know, they, they, went, they went back to work and, and were trying to um, contribute to their alliance and, and, and win. And,
there makes a difference to give Brad the victory. We're very happy. This is um, not a small thing for the team to go to state. It puts them on the, um, the radar of a lot of other teams. And so um, we are in a fortunate position. We can sponsor it. We have the funds for it, things like that. And so um, it was really exciting to play state. We might do OK. We probably won't get in the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, we're going to do great at state. We're going to completely dominate the competition and um, win. We have a strategy that's ready to go. Um, we're going to stick to what we do well and do it even better. Before we move on to state, we're going to try and get a holonomic drive going. So that means we can drive in all directions at once. Um, we're also going to try and make our beacon extender longer so then we can push it from a larger range. And we don't have to be quite so perfectly lined up. And oh, and we're also going to make our road faster. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of action still going on right now, um, and, I, and I'm interested to see how it all works. I, I think that there's a lot of focus now, which is nice. Um, we have a lot of time to really, really get this done right.